We had left Pango Pango to sail north to Hawaii. We planned to stop at the neighboring island where, naturally, we hit the anchorage just after dark. As I put anchoring in a strange harbor after dark on my fun list just under finding out Charlie Manson was at my daughter's sweet 16 party, you can imagine the funk I was in. Then the winds came. As any cruiser knows, the winds are always either too much or too little, but they are always on the nose. Such was the case on the morning we departed. For the next 10 days, we sailed into winds that increased from 25 to 30, then 35, finally to 40 knots. The direction? On the nose. We had about another 600 miles to go. Our steering was leaking and we were running out of hydraulic fluid. The dinghy sprang an air leak and was hanging limp off the stern. We couldn't wash dishes or make water because the boat was heeled over so far from the wind that the sink overflowed from seawater and the water maker wouldn't work at that angle. When we finally spotted Christmas Island, we were about 10 miles off. We had to tack a few times to get in. As we tacked and sailed and then tacked again, I started to actually feel a joy welling up inside. Pretty much the same feeling when I first approached Nuka Eva after our 2,700 mile voyage from Mexico or the first time I sailed into Radio Bay in Hilo, Hawaii on my first major ocean crossing. I felt happy. I didn't dwell on the feeling at the time. I just remember how good it felt, how proud I was of my boat, of Jody, and the crew. We'd had adversity thrown at us again and again, but we were, once again, about to enter a new paradise, a new cruising ground to be discovered. You know, if adversity wasn't to rear its ugly head now and then, how could we ever feel that thrill of accomplishments? Sometimes you have to get out and fight the dragon in order to earn the right to kiss the princess. My dragons change, but with any luck, I will continue to find a way to plant a lip lock on that princess.